Hi, I wanted to review some of the material from today on July 22nd. Um, first of all, we talked about general review of um, ionotropic, ion channel receptors, like the glutamate receptors that let sodium in, or the GABA receptors that let chloride in, versus metabotropic, which are these ones that act through these things called G proteins, where the receptor indirectly, first of all, does a lot of complicated things to change metabolism, um, which is where the name comes from. But for two of the three kinds of G protein coupled receptors, the G stimulatory and G inhibitory, they also do indirectly activate a channel, either a sodium channel for the stimulatory or a potassium channel for the inhibitory. Um, the G other acts through purely metabolic changes, which makes it more complicated what it does. Um, related to that, we reviewed again the different types of norepinephrine receptors. Um, and we're going to return to those, especially the alpha-1 versus alpha-2s, when we talk about um, depression. Um, we also talked about the Sobel study. Um, in that study, they looked at um, this question of how ADHD affects brain structures. And what they found is that using regular MRI, not functional MRI to measure activity, just regular MRI to measure the volume, the size of different brain structures, um, what they found is that compared to controls, people with ADHD who don't take medication have a smaller putamen in this part of their striatum. Um, and then the other thing that they found is that people who have been taking medication have a putamen that's more similar to controls. Um, now, since this is humans, it's all self-selected, and there are a lot of limitations to this. But one interpretation of this um, is that perhaps um, the act of taking um, stimulants helps to prevent or reverse some of the changes that happen with ADHD. Um, we then also talked about a mouse model for ADHD. This is using something called prenatal nicotine exposure. Um, and um, what they found is that if they give, uh, actually what previous studies have found is that if mice, pregnant mice, are given a high dose of nicotine, then the babies come out very hyperactive. Um, in this study, they wanted to figure out how prenatal nicotine exposure affected not only the children that were exposed as fetuses, but also the, the, those babies' children. Um, the expectation was actually going in that this wouldn't cause hyperactivity in the next generation, that it's really just the fetal exposure. When the mom's pregnant, the, the babies are exposed as a fetus um, that causes hyperactivity. But what they found, surprisingly, is that um, not only are the babies hyperactive, but when they grow up, and have babies, the females' children also are hyperactive. And so this could be for a variety of chain reasons. It could be a genetic change. It could be some alteration in milk. It could be a learned behavior. Um, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about next time.